first question is right on track on the topic of this week, and it's about the currency trinity. Student asks, with regards to the properties, medium of exchange, store of value, and unit of account, the presentation states, no currency plays all of these roles perfectly. When evaluating these properties with respect to Bitcoin, it seems to state that Bitcoin hits all the marks of a medium of exchange, while the only thing holding it back from other two is its price uh, stability. If that stabilizes the price properly in a couple more halving, or halvening, as some people say, events take place, what are your predictions on BTC covering all three properties of the currency trinity perfectly? And I'll come to that in a second. And Demetrius has the results here from our quizzes. We ask this question every year. So I have the results from 2018, 2019, and 2020. I'm from the students of the MOOC. What percent of students think it would be a medium of exchange? And it has gone 29% in 18, 47% in 19, and 43% in 2020. What percent think store of value? And that has gone 49, 43, 46%. And what percent unit of account? And that is 7%, 8%, 8%. And none is 15%, 2%, 3%. So the big increase has been in medium of exchange. I think it's fair to say that in many of the characteristics of a medium of exchange, Bitcoin works fine as it is now. And on the question of store of value, very interesting question, right? Like there's a lot of people, because that's a question that's laden with assumptions of what people mean and what people want to accomplish. What you often hear, this a little bit Austrian economics type of concept is, it's like gold, if your currency devalues, if there's inflation, it will hold its value. And so that is a concept of it may or may not appreciate tremendously, but in a scenario where other things depreciate, lose value, you will have something solid as protection. Now, implicit in there, sort of, maybe, a little bit, is some form of price stability, non-variability, which is something a little different than like the, it has its value. And that's interesting, because even, you know, the classic example everyone talks about is gold, and gold is medium stable, right? It's not fully stable. If you look at the price of gold over a long enough period, it goes up and down um, a non-trivial amount. Now, Bitcoin's interesting in this regard. It goes up and down a lot, right? Like, <laughs> so the simple answer is it's not yet a great store of value because it's bouncing around all over the place. So you could buy it today and the next day it might be down 3%. Right. It might be up 3%. It might be flat. It might be, who knows, all over the map. And so I think in the short term, and the classic answer, and the answer is from someone being conservative, is it's not a store of value because it's volatile. There is a little bit of a counter-argument that says it's volatile, but upward sloping. So for anyone who's held it through most parts of its history, Sure, it hasn't been stable because it's gone up. So, so, you know, when you say store of value, you're worried about it going down. And maybe you think, okay, the alternative to it going down is it being flat. But generally, people don't object to getting wealthier. So if it's been going up over time, that's also, of course, a store of value. But you have to think about the time frame, right? Like, there's definitely time frames if you bought and then sold it, it would have gone down or have gone down substantially. So, that's a little bit of the counter-argument. It all depends what you mean. Like, Bitcoin, for many people, has been a very good investment. Bitcoin is highly volatile, but highly volatile trending 
upwards so far. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. So this one is going to always, I think, have a little bit of an open question about it based on which of those two things predominate. Now, unit of account, everyone's pretty clear that certainly today Bitcoin's not a great unit of account because of its volatility, which makes sense. Um, it wouldn't be very practical if every week, you know, if your salary was denominated in Bitcoins and every week your salary went up and down 3%, 5%, 2%, a tenth of a percent, and you don't know how to plan your spending. Or if the price of a TV was denominated in Bitcoins and it also went up or down 10% a month, a year, uh, it's, it's um, hard to say we're there yet on unit of account. Hard to say that you'll ever be there on unit of account. Right? Like, I don't know. Today, still, gold's not really a unit of account in a modern economy. You don't say, I'd like to buy the latest Samsung TV. It's 0.3 ounces of gold. It would be strange, honestly. To, even though gold's significantly more stable than Bitcoin, it's still less stable than a well-managed national currency that is managed largely for price stability, right? Like, um, national currencies, sovereign currencies, tend to manage for, number one, price stability, number two, reducing unemployment, and of course, being a well-functioning medium of exchange. They are not explicitly designed to be a long-standing store of value. In fact, they're oriented to very slightly depreciate over time um, in order so that there's some incentive to spend them and keep the economy moving. I mean, it's like explicit that you know, people target 2% inflation annually, right? Like that's, it's an official central bank target. It's not a mystery, right? It's not some type of trick. They want it to lose approximately 2% of its value a year for a variety of reasons we'll get to in the central banking section. So it's hard to say over the long term the national currency is a great store of value. If you're saving for retirement, you probably don't want to just hold cash for 50 years. Most modern, well-managed national currencies are perfectly fine store of value over the medium term. If I'm going to fly to... New York in a week and I have dollars but most likely a week from now they can buy more or less what they can buy today and even six months from now it will be pretty close but you know pretty close if I'm in euros today and I'm switching to dollars there still could be a 10% euro dollar fluctuation easily in six months so I think it's a little bit more stable as a unit of account than um, uh, sorry, as a store of value over the short and medium term than Bitcoin and it's explicitly not a store of value over the long term. So I think being understanding the different time frames and understanding the different objectives clears up a lot of the confusion that kind of people argue about. You know, like, oh my God, look, the dollar has lost 90 something percent of its value in the last hundred years. Sure, but the dollar wasn't designed to maintain its value over 100 years, right? It's not, it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. It's the central bank's explicit in what it wants the dollar to use. And if you want to create value over 100 years, you can go buy stocks, bonds, farmland, companies, any type of productive asset that tends to be positively sloping over time. Um, none of those productive assets, however, are meant, are designed to be mediums of exchange, unit of account. Because the having a stable investment and having a thing to denominate goods and services in and having something that you exchange value with, store value, unit of account, unit of exchange, don't necessarily need to be packaged together. There's no perfect answer. Nothing meets these perfectly. 
they have different usage cases. And so it's important to disaggregate that bundle when you're analyzing something and uh, think about what's the use for one versus the other and what the explicit design is. Um, because in many cases, the design decisions are explicit. You know what they are. And so you should act accordingly.